वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर अपर्णा वाटवे फैकल्टी ऑफ टाटा इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ सोशल साइंसेस दिस मॉड्यूल इज अबाउट इंडियन एनवायरमेंटल मूवमेंट्स इट इज पार्ट ऑफ पेपर एनवायरमेंट एंड सोसाइटी इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी विल बी लुकिंग एट डिफरेंट कैटेगरीज ऑफ एनवायरमेंटल मूवमेंट्स दैट हैपन इन इंडिया वी विल लुक एट सम केस स्टडीज of different organizations and their movements in the end we will look at different ideologies which supported these environmental movements india has an interesting history of environmental movements nature conservation is not new to us it can be traced back to the king ashoka but recent environmental movements are different they are more in the form of struggle against the resource degradation they can be divided based on material ideological and political expressions in the material context struggles continue in opposing groups over access to natural resources on one hand we have rich farmers industrialists urban consumers who have gained unequally through economic development they have not faced the loss of environment and have not been affected by degradation of resources against these are small farmers pastorals nomads tribals they are relatively powerless groups and they are the ones who have borne the brunt of environmental degradation their livelihoods have been seriously undermined origins of conflict can be traced back to the very process of development in the last century forest water and other natural resources were diverted to produce energy and commodities for the rich the poor had to deal with the polluted environments which were results of faulty industrialization there was physical displacement and loss of access to resources indian environmental movements are often organized by groups of victims of environmental destruction the victims of bhopal gas tragedy in the 1990s came together to get social justice but they also demanded better environmental laws to guard others against hazardous waste material anti mining groups of local communities have formed a network they try to prevent ecologically destructive development all along the area they promote environmental conservation and restoration all these have been outside the sphere of formal party politics political parties in india have mostly been away from all this they neglected and turned a blind eye to the loss of natural resources they did not realize that threat to lives or and livelihoods of vulnerable pop- population comes from environmental degradation only recently since 2000 some political parties are expressing environmental concerns congress leaders supported the anti mining struggle in orissa shiv sena strongly opposed the jaitapur nuclear power plant in konkan bharatiya janata party supports improving the ecosystems of ganga and narmada but such cases are very rare most environmental action groups question the whole model of development they are today talking about alternatives to this development in this people are mobilized to ensure development through natural resource management Indian environmental struggled gained prominence since 1921 in 1921 kumau people protested government control over the forest at the same time in 1921 murshi satyagraha was organized near pune which protested against land grabbing for the development of dam the forms of protest have mostly been non violent The Gandhian model of satyagraha is very commonly seen. Communities resisted through rallies or pradarshans. 
dharna or sit down strikes were very common gherao surrounding some political leader or prominent figure has also been tried chakka jam jail bharo bhook hartal are some of the most stronger forms of protest all these forms of protest are mostly non violent they are considered the weapons of the weak they are usually used step by step the simpler ones first and the more stronger ones later collective protest against the government often gets media attention radio and television are controlled by information and broadcast ministry hence print media has played an important role importance of internet and social networking is growing today so far we have looked at the general features of environmental movements in india now we will look at some of the cases of environmental movements in india chipko andolan in uttarakhand is globally famous it took place around 1970s and 80s it was an organized resistance against the destructions of forest in the himalayas villagers hug trees and prevented the contractors from failing them the first such chipko action was in 1973 it was sparked off by the government's decision to hand over a plot of forest to a sports wood company for harvesting wood the villagers were very angry with this because they had demanded wood but their requests were denied dasholi gram swarajya sangha and the women of the area went to the forest and formed circle around the trees they stopped tree cutting this was done under the leadership of gandhian activist chandi prasad bhat he also continued to work to protect and enrich forests through plantation of local species another leader of this movement was sundarlal bahugana he continued to stop other destructive activities like dams in himalaya dasholi gram swarajya mandal turned from struggle to reconstruction work at the grassroots level it was lead taken by women was one of the notable features of this andolan the chipko andolan won a major victory in 1980 with a 15 year ban on tree felling in the himalayan forest this movement spread to other states also people stopped felling in the western ghats and vindhya forest under the same reasons pressure was built for a natural resource policy oriented towards people's needs and ecological requirements another famous movement is narmada bachao andolan in 1978 narmada valley development project was approved it included building of 30 large dams 135 medium dams and 3000 small dams on the narmada river system in madhya pradesh maharashtra and gujarat sardar sarovar project in gujarat promised to supply irrigation and drinking water to dry zones it was forcing displacement on thousands of people widespread environmental damage was also expected in 1985 the world bank financed sardar sarovar dam there was no consultation with the displaced communities work started but the resettlement of people did not start it was far from adequate there were widespread protest soon in the 1990s narmada bachao andolan or save narmada movement gained prominence it was led by a social activist medha patkar narmada bachao andolan directly opposed the dam construction it proposed developmental alternatives activists demanded that world bank take responsibility and was accountable for the displacement of millions in 1991 the leaders of narmada bachao andolan went on a indefinite hunger strike all environmental activists pressurized the world bank and the united states of america finally the world bank started an independent review of the project in the end the project report showed that drastic reforms in rehabilitation programs were needed 
environmental impact studies were also far from complete. These were supposed to be done again, but it was not seen to be possible by the government and finally the loans were cancelled. However, the Indian government pledged to continue the dam project with its own funds. The Andolan continues direct action and legal protests even now. It is connected with other movements against socially unjust and environmentally insensitive development projects. A very innovative approach was adopted by Save the Western Ghat March in 1987. This was an organized march on foot along the 2,500 km long mountain chain of the Sahihadris. Over 150 voluntary organizations from Goa, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Maharashtra and Gujarat had joined this. The march started from two ends of Western Ghats, Kanyakumari in Tamil Nadu and Nawapur in the Dhulia district of Maharashtra. The march ended in Goa after three months of walking. The aim of this march was to draw attention to the threatened mountain ecosystem. It also tried to activate local groups in playing a watchdog role to prevent further ecological deterioration. It canvassed public opinion for the protection of the Western Ghats. This led to the involvement of hundreds of individuals. There was emergence of environmental leadership in the region. Today, these leaders have matured and they take a prominent role in conserving Western Ghats. Several community-based initiatives for conservation were also started and still continue. In 2012, Western Ghat Ecological Expert Panel was created to look at ecological sensitivity of the Western Ghats and suggest areas to be protected. This was led by Professor Madhav Gargil, one of the earlier leaders of Western Ghats March. The report was initially rejected by the government, but awareness created for past 30 years led to huge public support to the environmental protection of the region. Finally, government had to appoint another committee to take a relook and accept many of the provisions of the report. These are the long-term effects of concentrated environmental awareness and action in the region. Some environmental movements actively took up ecological restoration. Raigan Siddhi in Ahmadnagar district of Maharashtra is one example. Social activist Anna Saheb Hazare organized people for watershed management. Today, sufficient water is available for household use and irrigation. It is a model village of eco-restoration. Similar story is seen at Hivre Bazaar in Ahmadnagar district. Scarcity of water was leading to very poor crops. There was large-scale migration from the village. Around 1990s, village Sarpanch Popatra Pawar used government funds to regenerate natural resources. The village took a conscious decision to avoid water demanding crops like sugarcane and bananas. Rainwater harvesting, afforestation, percolation tanks were all accompanied by program for social change. It led to improved environment and well-being for the people. The struggle for Niyamgiri Hills in Orissa is a milestone in Indian environmental history. In Eastern Ghats region of Orissa is biologically rich and ecologically fragile landscape. Tribes constitute around 20% of the population in Orissa. In the past, many tribals suffered displacement due to development projects. Niyamgiri hills of Raigada and Kalahandi districts are inhabited by Dongriya Kon, a particularly vulnerable tribal group. They are known for distinct culture and worldview which is merged with their landscape. Niyam Dongar is their main deity and source of all life. The Niyamgiri range contains large deposits of bauxite. It is in great demand 
by the aluminium industry. In 2003, Niam Raja Hill was marked as a mining area by Vedanta Aluminium working with the Orissa Mining Corporation. Construction of 1.5 million ton alumina refinery was done at Lanjigad. In 2002, land acquisition notice was sent to 12 villages in the path of the Lanjigad refinery. In 2003, acquisition of land was started by bulldozing the site and displacement of families. There were spontaneous protests from all the tribals. Niyamgiri Suraksha Samiti was formed and many activists criticized the government and its industrial policy. Many organizations joined this opposition. It drew attention of international organizations including Amnesty International, Action Aid and Survival International because tribal lands of primitive groups were being threatened. The Dongria Kons are a scheduled tribe. They are a particularly vulnerable tribe living in Schedule 5 area of India. Indian constitution grants powers to scheduled tribes to govern land and resources in scheduled area. Panchayat extension to the Scheduled Area Act or PESA gives rights of self-governance. Courts have upheld the right of self-governance and the right of local communities to mandatory public hearings before any acquisition of the land. Saxena Committee report in 2010 provided extensive documentation of the environmental and social impacts of Vedanta's activities. It showed violations of various laws. Ministry of Environment and Forest cancelled the forest clearance and refused to allow mining to commence. Vedanta challenged this in Supreme Court. In, in a landmark judgment in April 2013, Supreme Court wasted the decision for environmental clearance and mining with the Gram Sabhas of affected Dongria Korn communities. In August 2013, the 12 affected villages voted unanimously to reject the mining. This is India's first environmental referendum. It is a historic victory for Dongria Korns and has set a precedent across India. The connection between local communities and Niamgiri landscape was recognized by government bodies and gained worldwide support. It clearly showed how local communities can maintain a powerful position in resisting the assault of large-scale industrial development. Environmental historian Ramchandra Guha has categorized environmental ideologies. Gandhian ideology relies heavily on moral or religious values, support for traditional methods in environmental conservation. Marxist ideology sees the problem in political and economic terms. The patterns and processes of environmental degradation and social conflict can be explained by unequal access to resources rather than the question of values. This is the idea of the Marxist. There is a third ideology. It relies mainly on the technological alternatives. It believes that technology can solve environmental problems. All three can be traced in the history of Indian environmental movements. Today, the environmental and social activities are focusing on policy level changes and rights of self-governance. They are engaging in long battles with the government and corporates both inside and outside in the court. Environmental movements take many forms. In this module, we have looked at a few of them. At the end of the last century, Government of India introduced a special economic zone policy known as SEZ. The aim of this policy was to promote export-oriented industrial and economic development. Tax concessions and other incentives were given to the corporate groups. This resulted in a large-scale land acquisition process which was forced on the people. 
the state resorted to the principle of eminent domain which means that all land belongs to the state and can be given for any public purpose in few years more than 1000 sczs were sanctioned across india private developers and governments set about land acquisition this caused great discontent in the rural areas there were several protests rallies marches dharnas and other forms of andolans across india common people were being alienated from the land which was their source of livelihood traditional habitats and traditional livelihoods were greatly affected ss had policies excluded citizens from the development process it showed a lack of respect for local self governance this was against all other laws of india people's resistance against forced land acquisition took a very strong form in many cases government could not forcibly acquire peasants land for corporates it was finally decided that corporates need to purchase the land directly from the people this has led to major changes in the land acquisition act which was formed during the british period this act was putting people's lands completely in government control it did not talk about resettlement or compensation or displacement in great details demand from local communities and social activists finally led to writing of a new act the land acquisition rehabilitation and resettlement act of 2013 also known as lara in this act rehabilitation and resettlement rights of the people were recognized it talked about livelihood compensation and social impact assessment before the development activities were undertaken it gave right to fair compensation and transparency in the process thank you very much for being with us